So the Legion Go is now nearly a month old. I've had mine for about a month and it's a really fun device. I can't decide yet if this is gonna be my daily driver or the new Steam Deck OLED that just dropped, but I'm still enjoying it. I even took it on a long train ride with me and that was fun. If you watched my review, you probably did see some of my complaints. And in this video here, I am gonna show you some tips and tweaks that addressed almost every one of those complaints. I have eight or so tips, tweaks, accessories that are gonna help you immensely and not break the bank if you are a new owner of the Lenovo Legion Go. So let's get right into it, starting with the SSD. The Lenovo Legion Go either comes with 512 gigabytes of space or one terabyte of space. I got the 512 gigabyte and I wanna upgrade my storage. There are places like Micro Center that will do an upgrade for you, but I just wanted to do it myself. So I have this 2242 drive, I got a one terabyte, and there are a couple ways that you can replace the SSD on the Lenovo Legion Go. There are basically two methods that I'm gonna describe here. Either you want a clean drive method or the clone drive method. For the clean drive, I'm not gonna to get too deep into that here because it's pretty straightforward. Uh, but if you do want to use a clean drive, you're gonna to wanna to get your own recovery media from Lenovo. Basically, you go to the Lenovo support site, you go to view product details, you click on drivers and software, and you select order now under recovery media follow the prompts that are given and select download digital. You just need a USB stick to get that done. I'm gonna leave a link to the Reddit thread that describes that in detail down below. Again, it's a lot easier than trying to clone the drive you already have on the Lenovo Legion Go, so I won't go in depth on that one. But let's say you've already installed some games and things like that and you wanna keep your data. If that means you wanna clone your existing drive and to clone your drive, you're gonna need two things. You're gonna need an SSD enclosure and you're gonna need a free trial of a software called Macrium Reflect. So the enclosure that I'm using is a Sabrance enclosure. It is toolless. It can hold all M2 variants. So 2242, 2230 and the very common 2280. It has a really fast transfer speed and it has a thermal pad to keep it from overheating. I've had a few different M2 enclosures and I would say that this one is my favorite so far. As far as Macrium Reflect, it's a paid software that you use for disk management, but there is a 30 day free trial. Obviously that's gonna be enough for something like this. Annoyingly, you do have to register using your email and all that, but I would say it's worthwhile because it's gonna make the job of cloning your drive really, really simple. So all you have to do is starting with your new drive, plug that into your enclosure. For me, I have this little nub that holds the SSD in place. Then once that's closed, I plug the entire thing into the Legion Go. I open up Macrium and you should see two or three different disks show up in your Legion Go. For me, I had three disks that showed up on the Legion Go. Disk one was the internal disk, the internal SSD. Disk two was the SD card that was plugged in and disk three was the new SSD that's plugged in via the enclosure. So if you select disk one, you click clone drive, you select clone drive two, and then select disk three for that, because again, that's the one that's the clean drive in there. And don't forget to clone all partitions and ensure that all the extra space goes to the C drive. That's where you want the extra space to go. This clone is gonna take about 30 minutes. It's not too bad. But once it's complete, your new drive is ready. Now all you have to do is open up the Legion Go. So I have this Strabito repair kit and it has everything I need. I took out the screwdriver, the magnetic panel, and a variety of pry tools. Uh, I also ended up taking out the tweezers too. That's gonna help as well. Then on the Legion Go, you just unscrew the six screws on the back plate. From here, removing the back plate is gonna take some time, but you have to open up the kickstand and pry your way around, starting at the notch at the bottom. It does once again take patience and persistence to pry around the entire back plate, but I promise you, you will get there. I got there. One of annoying thing here was that the power button was really easy to press as I was touching around the, the frame of the device. Watch out for that. Maybe drain the battery before you open this bad boy up. In any case, once it is open, you can lift the sticker that is stuck to the connection of the battery and you can use that to help actually disconnect the battery. Now, I do have a quick confession. I tried to disconnect the battery. I just couldn't get it done. Personally, I got impatient and I moved on. I do recommend disconnecting the battery, but it is a little bit of a challenge to get your pry tool in there properly and push it out slowly. The next step, of course, is to actually get the SSD out. It is covered by another sticker. This one covers the battery itself and covers the SSD. So you're gonna wanna pry that off with tweezers. It wasn't too bad to do that. Unscrew the SSD, take that out. The SSD is in a little sleeve. So you wanna carefully pry that off as well using tweezers. And then you're gonna take that same sleeve and apply it onto the new SSD, plug that in, screw it down, reapply the battery sticker, reconnect the battery if you did manage to get it disconnected. 
reapply that sticker, snap the back plate back on, screw the six screws, boot it up, and hopefully you should have a bunch of new space now. Altogether, this took me maybe 90 minutes, 30 minutes was just letting it clone to drive and then 60 minutes to get it open, replace everything. Really the hardest part was having enough patience to get the back plate off, but I did get it off and I replaced the SSD and now I have a one terabyte. So I'm pretty happy about that. By the way, there are also extenders that should allow you to use a 2230 drive in here as opposed to the 2242 drive. And that might actually be a more cost effective way of increasing your storage since I do think 2230s are more affordable than 2242s right now. So something to consider if you want to go with a 2230. So another complaint I had about the Lenovo Legion Go was that the matte plastic on there is prone to smudges and I have found the perfect fix and they are these Lenovo Legion Go skins from dbrand. As usual, they are super high quality. I've removed and applied dozens of different skins to my Steam Deck just with how long I've been working with dbrand now and the Steam Deck itself remains feeling brand new. The skins are even easier to apply on the Legion Go because there are separate controllers and things like that. Overall, they have a nice feel on the hands. This skin here is the triple black. It's super subtle, but you can see the design as the light hits it. It's great if you like something low key, but but there's also acid, obsidian and magma, sea breeze, and a bunch more. You can also get the Lenovo Legion Go glass to protect the screen. Both of these together will save you in the long run. It's gonna keep your hand held fresh for sure. Definitely check these out using the link in the description, dbrand.com slash fan the go. I've been working with dbrand for a while now, so I was very happy to hear that they have these Legion Go skins. Don't forget to check them out at dbrand.com slash fan to go. One more complaint I had in my review was actually the case that comes with the Lenovo Legion Go. It's pretty good. It's just, you can only store the Lenovo Legion Go in there. So even though I'm really glad it comes with a case and it holds onto the base for the mouse as well as the analog stick, you can't store the power brick, much less any other accessories. So for me, I have to go with my trusty TomTok bag. It holds almost any handheld that I have. The Lenovo Legion Go is one of the biggest ones and it holds that. It's incredibly durable and incredibly versatile, but now they've updated the divider to be firmer and it gives even more protection to the handheld that's inside the bag. And I can carry around all my accessories like the power brick, the earbuds in their carrying case, the base for the mouse, a USB-C charging cable, a lightning charging cable, and I keep a screen wipe and some USB accessories too. These bags have amazing quality. They offer a two year warranty on their products and there is a special discount link in the description. So be sure to check that out. All right, before I go to the software tweaks that I want to tell you about, I do have one more accessory to share because it fixes the last complaint I had in the unboxing of the Lenovo Legion Go, and it was the power brick. There are no collapsible prongs, no detachable cable. It's limited to 65 watts. And so even though it's nice, of course, that they have one, this power adapter from Ugreen has been a much better choice for me. It charges more quickly, but also more efficiently thanks to the GAN technology. And you can charge your phone and the Go at the same time and it'll still charge faster than the adapter you get with the Lenovo Legion Go. It has three USB-C ports, one USB-A, collapsible prongs like I mentioned, so it's even easier to store anywhere. You can use any USB-C cable that you want since it's detachable. Ugreen does have some nice braided ones. I use both their USB-C and lightning cables. This adapter is another one where I have a special discount link in the description, so check it out if you're interested in upgrading your power adapter for the Lenovo Legion Go. All right, so I also want to tell you about some software tweaks that you need to make sure you're doing if you haven't already. Number one is downloading the most up-to-date drivers. Now, the Lenovo Legion Go team has been incredibly transparent and providing a lot of updates. And so they are going to provide the ability to just do an over the air update for drivers using just Legion space, but they haven't done that yet. That's just on the planned roadmap, hopefully by the end of the year. In the meantime, you're going to have to go to the dedicated site for the Lenovo Legion Go drivers. You can download the latest graphics drivers. So as of recording, the date on the latest drivers is November 6, 2023, and it's already been a couple weeks later. But even that date is not quite accurate. I think these are more like September drivers. They released around the time of Starfield. So you might still encounter issues with newer games like Lords of the Fallen and Talos Principle 2. And there is an unofficial way to get more recent drivers. But if you're someone watching this video and you haven't done it already, it's not something I would suggest. I would suggest just waiting until Lenovo brings the latest drivers to us, which should hopefully be pretty soon. In any case, I'll leave a link to where you can get those latest drivers down in the description. 
One thing I missed in my review is that you're going to want to set the OS power mode to efficiency for almost all scenarios. I learned this after speaking to Carrie, aka the Fox, and the OS power mode basically has three settings. It's performance, balanced, and efficiency, and it's a little bit counterintuitive because you'd imagine that performance is going to mean more power is going into your graphics, but the truth is it really denotes how much power is going to the CPU, so what you want to do is set it to efficiency so that less power is going to the CPU and that allows more power to go to the GPU. Of course, if you're doing something that would tax the CPU, like emulation, then you're gonna to wanna to set that back to performance. But just keep in mind that efficiency is usually gonna be the best when you're playing video games. All right, the last software tweak I have for you is setting the VRAM. You can actually do this in the BIOS. If you wanna to get to the BIOS, turn off the Lenovo Legion Go altogether. When you're turning it back on, hold the volume plus button as you're pressing power. That's gonna bring you into the BIOS. Go to BIOS setup, then more settings configuration, then UMA buffer size, and you can set this to four gigabytes. A lot of people have been requesting six gigabytes and that's currently not available, but it is coming soon. And it is actually available in a beta BIOS, which again, I don't recommend going out to get, but if you do get it, you can see that it does work at six gigabytes VRAM. And maybe this is dumb, but I wanted to showcase that the Lenovo Legion Go is actually a pretty good machine if you want to play games in Tate mode or portrait mode. So good games for that are, of course, vertical shmups like Ikaruga, Blue Revolver or Dodonpachi Resurrection. But not just shooters, there are games like Downwall, Thumper and Demon's Tilt that all support portrait mode when playing these games. And the reason the Lenovo Legion Go in particular is good at this is because the controls are removable. And of course, that means you don't have to contort your hands when you're rotating the display, but also because the controls are removable, you can actually stand the tablet up in portrait mode using the same kickstand. Of course, it's not gonna have the same range as when you're using the kickstand in landscape mode, but it does work. And I've played Blue Revolver quite a bit with it and it's pretty awesome. Now, some of these games are gonna take some extra work to get them to play in portrait mode sometimes, but it can be worth it depending on what you're playing. And the last thing I wanna say with the Lenovo Legion Go is that there is a lot more to come. There, like I mentioned, the Lenovo engineers are being very transparent and open about what they're working on and they seem to be working on a lot. It seems like there are a lot of late nights and weekends and things like that to get requested features implemented into the Lenovo Legion Go. And then of course, there's gonna be the community as well. Handheld Companion is working on a version of their app that's gonna work with the Legion Go. So it's really fun times ahead for this device. If you're still interested in this device, I encourage you to check out different communities like legiongolife.com website, the YouTube channel Deck Wizard, which has been making a lot of videos for not just the Steam Deck, but also Lenovo Legion Go and the ROG Ally. And also newcomer Vault Sea Lion Productions over on YouTube has been putting out a lot of Legion Go content. So check both of those channels out. I'll leave links in the description. They're pretty awesome. And I hope you're having a wonderful week. Until next time, Deck Gang out.